Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Previously on my restaurant in India. Will it be finished by the deadline? For sure. I mean, in India, everything gets done last minute. We are going to be open in six days, and I haven't got a cold room. I haven't got a kitchen. I haven't got water. I haven't got electricity. Everything's gone off. All gone. So we're opening regardless of systems not even being in place. Sophie's depleted, and Nathan's pretty much in tears. I fear that they might be cracking down, but I think they've also bitten more than they could chew. Do they want to be open? In the starting to book parties, but where do we store our liquor? This needs to be cleaned out and it needs to be done today. The issue in the restaurant is the service staff and that's been the complaint every night. The drinks are coming back, we're just pouring them down the sink. It's taken 20 minutes for them to put that order in. I've got some bad news. We can't do the launch party on the 14th. I'm flying home from my brother's wedding with the pushback of the launch date. It means that I'll be flying back three days before the launch. I miss my son, I miss my mum. <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> It's been a tumultuous six weeks for Sarah, and with the restaurant launch party just four days away, things are more stressful than ever. After a brief trip back to Australia for her brother's wedding, Sarah returns to Goa with her son Phoenix and her mum Lorraine. So much has to happen between now and the launch. We're soft launching now, so we're open every night, so there's everyday struggles that we have to overcome, but on top of that, it's planning for the entire launch party. What do you think, Mum? Well, India. my bunny's in the airport so far, oh, but shit. the weather's nice. We have a busy week ahead. Once we get through this week, then it'll be a lot more relaxed, I think. Well, a little bit more relaxed. <laughs> oh, he's passed out already. Oh, the poor little oh. man. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so excited to have you here, Mum. Oh. <laughs> Today is a very special day for Sarah as she's taking her mum to see the restaurant for the first time. A huge influence in Sarah's life, Lorraine also raised her children as a single mum and her approval will mean a lot. Yeah. Here we go, mum. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. All good? Here we go. Here we go. Oh, you really have gotten used to it, Sarah. <laughs> show Mum how you really drive in India. No, don't show me how you really drive in India, Sarah, please. <laughs> crazy couple of months and I've put everything into it and it still doesn't feel real. I still can't even get my head around what we've pulled off and what we're still trying to achieve. So the villas go all the way down, 13 villas. Oh wow. She's always been driven and always been creative and at one stage when she was 18 she had five jobs at once. So she was never home, she always worked and she has never stopped. She's got that tenacity and that drive and I think she's seen me struggle as a single parent and I think she just wants to make a good life. It's been tough but Sarah doesn't give up. 
<laughs> that is something. You know, being a single mum, like my mum, I realise that sometimes you do have to make sacrifices and you have to push hard to achieve. And, you know, when I took on this project, I knew that it would be a way that I will be able to support Phoenix and give him a huge start. I mean, there's been multiple times where I've almost wanted to give up. And I know that I have to do this and that I have to achieve and make it successful. And he's Ready? the number one driving factor for me. Cheesy dimples. Cheesy dimples. <laughs> it's just amazing. And I'm just so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. I've always thought that she's headed for something big. You know, she's always been driven. And I think it just took someone to believe in her and the partners have done that with Sarah and, and I don't think they'd be sorry. I think she's done an awesome job and I'm proud of her. <laughs> That's perfect. Hi, Charcoal! Hey, Charcoal! See you, Charcoal. See you, have a good night. Showing her mum the property is only half the experience. Next, Lorraine gets to trial some of Sarah's delicious menu. After dinner, Sarah drives her mum and son back home. They're jet-lagged and need an early night. With only three days until the big launch party, there's still a lot of work ahead for Sarah. While Lorraine and Phoenix enjoy a well-deserved sleep-in, Sarah takes Sophie to a local spice farm for lunch to catch up on everything she's missed in the last week. Okay, perfect. Follow the, follow the stairs. Thank you. Is that some good luck? <laughs> here. Uh, wow. But the news isn't what she wanted to hear. During Sarah's absence, it appears that none of the scheduled restaurant works have been completed, and the tension between the Indian owners and the Aussie expats seems to be at an all-time high. We are racing against time, and it's, it's a worrying situation. We've opened the doors, we have people coming in and there are teething problems and we still don't have great plumbing or, or the electricity situation sorted out. We don't have enough load. There's service, training, the complete menu not being out. So it's, it's really fixing everything and all at once it will be done. It's just working in an organized way without panic because I've seen half the challenge is to make sure people don't panic. As Sarah and Sophie sit down for lunch, they receive a call from Nathan, the bar manager, who's threatening to quit. He's fed up with the way Antares has been run and wants to go home to Australia. Sarah quickly calls restaurant owner Ashish to try and get some immediate solutions to the ongoing problems. Everyone's had enough now. They have actually had enough. Like, I'm worried that they're all going to be flying back and then what are we going to do? Antares is just one of 55 restaurants that Ashish and his partners own. So they are currently held up with urgent issues in Delhi. While they remain absent, the civil workers are not responding to the Australians' requests. So it's been difficult to get anything fixed. The electricity is fluctuating so much that the three amps have already blown. We have to send them back to Mumbai to get repaired. We, the combi oven goes out all of the time, so we'll have proteins cooking in the oven and then all of a sudden it goes out. The water has shut down today again already. Honestly, everyone is exhausted. And I'm not really sure what to do because I am worried that they're not going to be sticking around. And then we're, like, you know, completely starting again. And you can't understand. You can't understand me. Pictures about to look at as well. She sent me a message. We need more support here. Honestly, the point that the staff is getting to right now, if we haven't got any more support here, then we're honestly going to start losing our staff. Just in one day, my three top managers have all had massive issues. Arindam, Nathan and Sophie, and it's just, it's really hard. Sarah heads back to Antares, determined to find solutions before she starts losing staff. 
The launch party is just three days away and Sarah is balancing on a precarious tightrope as business partner, friend and employer. She wants the restaurant to succeed but doesn't want to sacrifice friendships. Sarah calls a meeting with the frustrated managers. Having the business partners away, it's up to Sarah to resolve their issues by herself. I think we all have frustrations at the moment and I've just been on the phone with Ashish and Joy and we think for now the best option is if we shut down for the next couple of days and we actually close and regroup. We all need a couple of days to get back on top of all of our stock, get top of all of our operations. Um, I think it's been a good kind of um, test for us to see all of the issues that we have at the moment. I think it's the best option for us to just close down for the next couple of days. The operation has to be smooth. At the end of the day, this is our job to be. I've had people say, we're not going to be return customers. They eat in other places in Goa and they still think this was the worst experience. And it's not the food, it's not the drinks. It's not. It's just the start service stuff. I don't know how it can be that bad. What do you think? I've told, told everything about what I think today. Oh, but what do you want to do? That's I just need I'm solutions saying. to the problems. Like, it's just everyone writes down on a piece of paper and nothing happens. She was here the other day, wrote four things down on a piece of paper that were going to get done. None of them are still done. What's the thing, though? What was the thing that the were allocated still to you? Yeah, that's been allocated yeah. to you, though. But I can't do it because I've got to do all this other that I'm worrying about. Like, I've got no staff. I'm, I'm supposed to be a manager to manage the bar and the processes. I can't even get alcohol here, for one. Can't even get it here. Mm. It's a month ago and I'm still waiting on mm. Like, what's going on? Mm. It's just a joke. The AC that needs to go in there for all the wines that are going to get spoiled, still don't have it. That was like seven days ago we asked for that. Like, there's a lot of that just needs to happen. Let's put the air but on the wall and fit it. in there for? store needs to have all my liquor in it so I can go down there and have everything organised so I can run the bar now. smoothly. But why can't it go in there now? Because it's yeah. 70 degrees down there. Go down there. Stand in there for half an hour. And you tell me if your wine's going to survive, that they want to sell at $2,000 or $5,000 a bottle. What do you want to do for now? Well, it's your restaurant. You make the choice. No, but I'm just saying we all need to work as a team. It's not just my choice. We obviously I'm, need to I all just, work as a team. I, I can still work in the chaos, but just they're losing money. So at the end of the day, yeah, you're... It's not about losing well, okay, money. Well, OK, if it's, it's not about, about losing actually, money, let's just open like we have been. Well, yeah, but it's about it's actually easy, getting the closed. processes. Look, it's a good excuse to be closed without showing the chaos. Yeah. I think we all need it. I definitely... I need it. And, um, the I'm team agree to close for two days leading up to the launch, so key works can be completed and they can train the service staff, order stock and get some much needed rest. It's been really difficult this last week and I think this next 48 hours will be good for everyone just to rejuvenate and get started again. While having a full restaurant this last week means we haven't had time to train staff and get the systems in place and to start functioning properly so I think this next 48 hours will be perfect for the staff to just kind of take a step back rejuvenate and hopefully come back and have the energy to fight again. Right on cue Ashish flies back from Delhi and gets the civil workers cracking. He hires some extra labour and suddenly productivity on the build is at an all-time high. This is a necessary stage but it's really a race against time to make sure that we cross all these hurdles well in time and by the day the restaurant opens officially, we are prepared for a huge, huge number of people walking through the doors. So right now our stairs are actually being built to our beach club. It's been three months of me working hard over here and trying to make things happen and have that final little push to get things done. With no customers, the service staff get some much needed training and Sophie gets a chance to finally teach them the menu properly. Now I can feel at ease knowing that the restaurant will be up functioning and the guests will be sitting there and there won't be any construction going on down below. So it feels like it's all coming together. Even if there is a lot of things that we need to fix, we're definitely doing something right. The Australians work together to set up the beach club for the launch party. Having time off service has done everyone a world of good and moods are lifting. We 
went through the hard yards the last couple of weeks and it's been all building up towards today. So today is the big launch and it's a very exciting day because it means it's all official. <laughs> today is a massive day for all of us and it was good to get the kitchen and the bar kind of familiar with the dishes and familiar with operations so that for today we can make it run as smoothly as possible. We don't know how many people are going to turn up. Like, we have no idea. So to plan for that is crazy. We've ordered so much stock. We've had to fill our whole private dining room with, with stock. It's piled high and we could have 100 people or we could have 1,000. So we're planning for 1,000, but it's so hard to plan for the unknown. Like, we honestly have no idea. Today is what we've all been waiting for and it's the official opening of Antares and hopefully we can pull it off and have a good kickstart to the season. Sarah, can I steal you for a minute? Yes, sure. Early morning problem. Yeah. Yeah. Already? <laughs> well, and this one looks a little big. I just <laughs> hope we can do this in time before everyone comes because this is really bad news. Do you see the water right, out, right oh, at the entry no. of our deck? And now we have 1,000 people. How are they going to get Where on the beach? Where are they going to stand? What are we going to do? Do we need to bring in more sand or what? We can't even just shift beach sand because it's illegal to just, you know, move beach sand. So I don't know, I, I, I don't know what we, we're speaking to the locals and we're trying to do something, but it's not just a question of blocking the yeah. entry, but it's drying it too. Because, yeah, we were going to have all the people out there as well. Yeah. All of the overflow and even the people entering from there as well. We'll have to get the locals involved and, and request yeah. for their help and yeah. shovel the sand. And first yeah. thing is to stop the inlet. Yeah, the inlet's... that's where it's coming in from. Like, if we have 700 plus people, there it's going to be too packed on the deck. We need to use that space. It looks, it looks, it looks difficult, Sarah. I don't know if we can use that part. But we need to. You need to do something. We have to use oh, it. Okay. Let me, <laughs> let me try. Let me try. Let me try. Let me try. Okay. Ashish gets partner Joy onto the problem. They've discovered that the neighbours have done some drainage works that have flooded Antares yeah, beachfront overnight. So we've added to the full drama. <laughs> like seven Indians trying to solve the problem. It's all hands on deck as everyone gets working on Antares in preparation for the launch. Even Sarah's mum has been put to work. <laughs> Since the restaurant doesn't usually cater for such large numbers, in the final hour, Sarah has recruited some travellers from a local hostel to help with the bar. With local industry VIPs and media in attendance, the launch party represents a big opportunity to get the word out about the restaurant, so it's vital that things go smoothly. But cracks in the night's plan arise early. With only minutes until the guests are expected to arrive, Paris realises she is still without a completed door list. Once again, the Aussies are not accustomed to the casual go-on approach, but Ashish doesn't seem bothered by it. Is whose guest are you? Yeah. So, if they're not on this list, face control. Face control means if they're really good looking, we are very shallow people, right? <laughs> so if they're really good looking, put a band on them, say welcome in. <laughs> Miraculously, Joy has managed to solve the flooding problem on the beach. So far, the night is running unusually on track. Miracles do happen in India. It's a mystic country. Sometimes love works, sometimes a push works, sometimes cash does. So this time it was cash. We are ready. We're just chilling out. I told you I'm not worried because I have the best team. That's it. It's a slow start to the night. And over an hour in, only a small portion of the expected crowd have arrived. I'm feeling pretty confident.
confident that the kitchen has it all under control and, you know, Arindam's doing a great job in the kitchen and he's all prepped and ready to go. Strangely, I feel quite calm so far. Possibly could be the calm before the storm. Indians love to party. I love to party. Goa is a party place. Everyone knows. Everyone come to Goa to party. Trust me, it's going to be insane. It's going to be a mad night. 500 people on the beach, dancing, having champagne, having a good time. I'm nervous. I'm excited. It's mixed feelings. Let's see. Hope for the best. Fingers crossed. to celebrate so yeah. I think all of us can just let our hair down a little bit and everything's organized like we're yeah. ready to go and I think yeah. it's definitely gonna be a long night I think the hardest thing will be our stamina yeah. and staying awake until the morning <laughs> Three hours into the party and suddenly large flocks of people start to arrive. As the numbers suddenly increase, the staff struggle to keep up with service and rowdy guests start to serve themselves. As hungry patrons crowd the bar, Arindam orders the service staff to get the food out quicker. On the plus side, the menu seems to be a hit. Some part of me was thinking, actually, it's going to be a flop and no one's going to arrive to our party. And then all of a sudden, I turned around and the place was packed. People everywhere and, you know, everyone's coming up and complimenting us on their place. And, yeah, I mean, all of a sudden it was a shock that the place was packed and full and everyone having a great time. I'm very proud of every single person here tonight. Everyone's dedicated their time and energy and their passion to the project. And I feel very lucky to have such strong people around me. When I'm happy, nothing's going to stop me. The launch party turns out to be a great success, with many compliments on Sarah's Australian-style menu. For your love, I will go far. I want to be wherever you are. I know I'm coming back for you. My love is a river long, the best ride in a million rounds. I know I'm coming back to you. Stop me, I'm making my way home. I'm making my As food way service home. finishes, Arindam's proud team so cleans the kitchen ready for a new day tomorrow. I go so low, I'm making my way home. I'm making my way Leading up to the launch day, I knew there was a lot of things that needed to be done, but deep down the reason why I didn't want it to open was because I was so scared it was going to fail. I was so scared that everyone would hate my menu, I was scared that the staff wouldn't be able to work together, I was scared that everything was going to fail, so I think deep down I was pushing it back because I was terrified. Ashish and Joy pushed me hard to open and I've just realised that wow, we're actually doing it. It's actually working. I mean, it's definitely not perfect, but it's actually functioning right now and I've learnt a lot. I'm growing a lot and refining skills that I never thought I had before this. 
in two years, my career has changed dramatically. I remember sitting in a modeling job and I just thought, this isn't my future. I don't want to be doing this anymore. And I just went, I'm going to become a chef. <laughs> and then six months later, I'd gone to cooking school and then entered into MasterChef, got picked. And then six months after that, opening up my own restaurant. Honestly, if you asked me two years ago, I would never have been able to predict that this would happen. There's no chance. Join a Shish mean a lot to me. They saw something in me that I never saw, and it makes me a bit emotional just because I feel so overwhelmed that they trusted me with something this huge. It's changed my life massively, and they saw that in me, and it's pretty special. I feel more than lucky. <laughs> I just can't believe how it happened. I really can't. It's pretty freaking awesome. Very awesome. <laughs> After the launch party, Antares went from strength to strength, soon cementing its place as one of the hottest dining destinations in Goa. Sarah continues to spend a large part of each year running her restaurant in Goa.